So after last week's unexpected visit to the lake in Bavaria, we've now moved on and we're going to head down to the Eagle's Nest to see Hitler's hideaway in the mountains. So we've just left Germany. We did dip our toes into Austria for the whole of about, what, a half hour? If that, yeah. We really wanted to go to have a look at Salzburg, but we've actually come down to Hitler's retreat. So we've managed to find an air, which is 800 meters away from where the buses take you up to the elevation for Eagle's Nest, which is Hitler's retreat. It used to be free here, but when we got here, we discovered then you had to pick option number two and it's five euros for the night. It doesn't have any services here. So obviously make sure you fill up your water, empty your toilet, all that sort of stuff. Cause you're gonna be off grid for the night if you choose to come here. Here we are. So this is where we get the bus from for Eagle's Nest. There's three buses down here. And uh, apparently they go together. So we just need to try and find out where we get our tickets from to get up there. Fingers crossed now we can actually get some for today. The buses are waiting. I'm not sure we're gonna get away with this. This is gonna be close if we get in. Bus number two, let's go. We've got our masks on and we made the bus. So this is a 15 minute bus ride and it takes us straight to Eagle's Nest which is Hitler's hideaway. It's 800 meters high and it's got to go through five tunnels. There's a few hair, yeah? We've gone around some hairpin bends already and it's gonna get worse. So we'll try and show you what we can. But it's we made the bus! Yeah, it's a bit noisy though, we're right above the engine. So sorry if you don't hear us, we'll show you some shots though. Look, we're still climbing. Whoa. doing it if it is I'm gonna stay here I'm genuinely right sweating we just walked through this tunnel and it's freezing so this is you go through the tunnel and you come to this elevator that takes you up to Eagle's Nest because you can see right his mentality here was he's surrounded 360 degrees by mountains and these are big mountains and then obviously he's right in the middle he's dug in because he knows during these world wars that he was a highly wanted man and he'd have been quite well hidden up here yeah but the views from a you know everyone else's perspective just the views alone like you can see salzburg in austria over there got germany beer and they got the full alp range it's just done it that is lovely happy with that and you love i am happy with that so where the restaurant is now today is where his hideaway was effectively so we're going to try and have a look in there we've had difficulty filming some areas because they have said no filming things like the lift the elevator up here is made of brass and that was no recording the bus trip was scary but there's some steps up here and it takes you straight to the top so we're going to go and have a look Wow, and look at the lake down there. So we've got a lookout point. So we made it to the top and they've got this 
beautiful big cross here and this is where you can obviously see 360 all the way round. Welcome to Bush Garden National Park. Don't know if I pronounced that right. So it says many things are being waiting to be discovered only at Alpine National Park in Germany. The independent development of flora and fauna is predominant in the protected area around Watsman and Kongersee from the bottom lake. There's a height difference of 2,300 metres and there's four main habitats, water, forest, alpine pasture and rock, which all offer shelter for loads of species of animals and plants. Also, right, something else I've just read, just around the corner, there's a huge coral reef on the side of the mountain and this says there's 30 types of corals built up on the limestone ridge. So obviously at some point, I wouldn't imagine either this area was underwater or the ice age has moved this stone about or something. That's crazy that they're finding coral remnants on hills this high up. We've even got paragliders here. Got to be brave to do that, mind. But I imagine the wind here is keeping them up and probably pretty cool for them. Yeah, let's go in circles. Yeah. Do you want to make yourself a little rock stack? Yeah. There you are then. There's a little pile of rocks just there. You can do them on that one. Make two rock towers. Here's one Dexter made earlier. Stu thought he just saw some bears over there, <laughs> but actually there's no bears, but there are some in Slovenia, so that'll be fun to look out for. We're just going to go and have a look now in Hitler's house. This is good, isn't it? They sell you some books and they give so, you yeah, all the history. So this is just telling you about how they were digging it out. The machinery and rails they had up here. They must have had some serious workers up here getting all this done. It's crazy, isn't it, when you think Just back? To, yeah, build all this all the way up here. Bonkers. So there is actually a book called History of the Eagle's Nest and it does state in there uh, and it's got original artefacts and information about how Hitler came up here in, yeah. and retreated. And even half a drink with a view. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the restaurant is through here. Oh, see, so I don't know if you're allowed in there. No. See, no, there's other people in there. See, this would have been his house. All the wooden ceilings. Yeah, so they've turned this now into a restaurant. We've got this huge tunnel to walk through now to get back. And it's lovely and cool in here. You're literally within a mountain. There's water everywhere. It's dripping down from the top there. It's nice to cool off though. Yeah, we were baking. It's hot up there. I would imagine the winter would be harsher though. They said it's very common for avalanches in this area. So during the winter months, this is all closed off because it's too dangerous. That's right, the bus rides don't go up either, do they? And you can see why with those hairpin bends. There's a few squeals from us on the way up. <laughs> So just at the end here, there's a terrace, like a viewpoint. Oh, I nearly went flying. I'm wearing flip flops. <laughs> I literally just slipped. So take it steady. <laughs> so here's the tunnel that leads to the elevator. And if you look up, you can see the eagle's nest just on the top there. And you go through this tunnel and then there's a brass elevator that takes you to the top. So what did you think of that? 
That was really, really good. The 360 sort of views were stunning. Lovely. But it was hot. It was very hot. So that tunnel was very welcome. I know, we've got to wait now for the bus to come back. Yeah. That was really good. It was fantastic views up there. If you're scared of heights, there's plenty of room. You can sort of step back towards the house so you don't feel like you're looking straight down. I'm starting to feel a bit queasy now, but I think that's more in expectation for the bus ride down. The hairpin bends were frightening. And it's incredibly high and it is literally a single track road so the buses take it like they go up in threes and they come down in threes and there's a passing place halfway and you'll see that they all stop in a row and wait for each other it reminds me a little bit of the tim and Faya national park because we had buses there taking us around volcanoes and it was a similar experience although i must say this is definitely higher and definitely more frightening but the views are epic and this is where the buses come and collect us all in a bit. <coughs> Just waiting for the bus now, love? Yeah, bus stop. Do you feel alright about going back down? No, because I now know what's coming. <laughs> it was frightening, wasn't it? And it doesn't matter which side you sit on because it meanders up and down the mountain. At some point, you're going to be on the outside. There was like five tunnels as well, weren't there? And they were really bouncy. The, the bus just bunny hopped. Hi, through. Chicky Nuggies. So, how much were the tickets for us as a family, love? It was 57 euros 20 cents, which so, is 48 quid. Well, that's not as bad as we first thought. So it's about two hours, isn't it? The buses drop you off. They give you about two hours and then you can jump back on. Yeah, you can do it for free, but know that it's a two hour hike like that on a mountain edge. It's in this weather, it's going to be hostile because you then got to walk down as well. So it's four hours of walking and People think it doesn't. it's not so bad going down, but we have experience when we have to go down that volcano. Going down the following day, your shins and butt cheeks kill. <laughs> so yeah, this time we decided we weren't going to be skin flints and we paid we the money. We paid for the bus. So here they come, the buses. So we made it down and I am happy we got back in one piece. Also, we were so desperate to get the bus and make sure we didn't have another volcano moment that we ended up getting the bus an hour earlier and changing our time just so we could get off. It was really good though. We're just going to hit the souvenir shop now. So we've got a bit of a problem. We're parked up here for the night. We saw on Park for Night that this was an air. I'm cooking the kids tea and I realise all of a sudden this car park's looking pretty empty. No one seems to be about anymore. There was a ton of motorhomes along here. Absolutely full. We couldn't even get space really. This was our, this was literally it. So we've literally had to quickly pack up and we've got to go. We've got to go find somewhere. We've got no plan in place. We don't know where we're going. We've literally just been on to park for night. There was another air that was about 20, 30 minutes away. But yeah, I mean, I don't know how current that information is. And that's the problem, isn't it? Sometimes you don't know until you get there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go check it out and uh, hopefully we'll get something sorted for tonight. <laughs> I just fixed the Come on then, kiddies. We need to eat up. We've got to get a move on. The stew has been awesome and he's managed to find another air. It's about half hour, 40 minute drive away. Um, we're all set up to go. All right. Where about she's going to go in? One sec. <laughs> so that was um, another chap coming up to tell us there was another air uh, closer. Yeah, but there's another there's bridge. Uh, he's come here to uh, park for the night, but obviously we realised we can't, so we're going to move. It's not he's just us. The kids love him and now eating their food with their fingers on plates just so we can get going because uh, we're obviously concerned now we're not going to get anywhere this late in the evening. It's the summer holidays and airs tend to be very popular. So on that note, we're going to get going because yeah. if this one's full, we got to drive. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> only us <laughs> actually not this time only us no nope, two others <laughs> I hope it's still here. We've just seen a motorhome driving in the opposite direction, so. It could just be a small. Fingers crossed. So just as we were about to pull up to our air, these two guys have stopped our van 
and said, no, you can't go up the road. Um, there's no turning circle, so they're letting us use their yards to turn around in. So we've got a turn around here. We've asked about the camping park up and they've said, nope, it's closed. We can't use it. It's gone. The road's blocked off. No route for campers. So back to the drawing board. Stu's just called. I've been at the back jumping in to make the bed quick. I don't know what time we're going to find a campsite or a park up. So I've made the bed in preparation. Stu was on the phone. He's called about three or four places um, and they're all full. Um, and I know what you're all going to think. You should have planned ahead. But to be fair to us, we've been on park for night. Two locations. One of them has changed since it was an air and charge parking and then has said no more overnight parking and the second one was on there and then we've driven there and it's no longer there so i mean you can't really plan for that Every that's the way it is sometimes you know normally we would have something sorted a bit sooner but because we thought we had somewhere is what has delayed us now so now we're yeah. in a rush and panicking yeah, it's all gonna be fine. It's all gonna be fine. Look how calm I'm being. It's gonna be fine. It is what it is. It's part and parcel of traveling, isn't it? It's sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and you've just got to sort it out on the road. So we noticed this chap over here, and I was like, oh, it's quite late. I wonder if he's staying. So, so is there anything behind me? I see that one post. Is there a second one? So Nick had the balls to go and ask if they were crashing here tonight. Yeah. So it looks that they are. We may just risk it for a biscuit. There's no signs. So this guy's just come in and we're wondering, is he gonna crash here tonight as well? <laughs> so I think we're all gonna try and group together so that if there's any problems, then at least we're all together and we can find somewhere. It's actually getting quite busy. We've been sat here a couple of minutes. In that time, another two have shown up. I'm pretty sure we're gonna be all right. We're just gonna stick it out tonight. The thunderstorms are about to set in as well. So the last thing we wanna do is drive around when it's heavily raining and thunder and lightning. And also me and Stu haven't had anything to eat yet. Luckily the children had something on the way. I've now made the bed back. So I think it would just be a case of cooking us yeah. some tea. We're gonna stay here, yeah? Yeah. Just fucking hit our motorhome now on a bloody post. Trying to budge up and move move across for people so everyone can have a bit of a bit of space. We're okay, we're okay. Is it alright? A little bit of damage, but alright. Keep coming back. Keep coming. A bit more. Stop. Okay. There's the post. He's, not, he's knocked the actual post out. Look at the where have you hit it on the van? Back door, like straight outside. That's our garage door. F it's just in. All the seals gone. Welcome to Austria. So we've just made some room for some other campers. Stu's misjudged where he was and instead of coming out straight, he's come out at an angle and obviously by doing that, he's just uh, dented the whole back end of the van. And it does sound savage, but the garage door is kind of like concaved in um, and it's the back right corner. So yeah, I am gutted. We've just got to Austria and I'm certainly not hearing the sound of music just yet. I'm wondering if we can hit that, if we lift it up, can we hit it back in the other side and then... No, it's double skinned. That'll oh. be all right. What I'll do there, Yeah. I need to get that extra bit of wood out. Right. I can seal that back in. Yeah. Yeah, that'll sort that out. There's a little, I just wanted to see what damage has been done here. This panel's okay. This panel for the better part is okay. There's just like a little hairline crack there. Nothing major. It's just gutting in it. Yeah, there's no, nothing's, nothing's there's loose. There's no movement or No, cracks. that could have been a lot worse. I literally heard it just go like that and I was like, oh yeah. no, what have you wet? It's late, see? I know, this is why um, we don't What we were doing late, was, we it? were already parked up, but another A-class has pulled in. So I had a couple of feet I could move this way, Nick could move a couple of feet this way and they would then be able to squeeze in. But I totally obviously forgot about that post. Never mind. Babes. Yes. Don't worry about it. It's been a lot of driving. Yes, it is, it is what it is. This storm is coming. 
I've literally just felt it right above my head. Just over there, you've got some lightning going on. So if nothing else, we're gonna have a good show. I am getting soaking actually, it's just come down above me now. Look at those clouds. Yep, this is us for the night. I'm gonna go in, make some food and get bunkered down for bed and watch the storm.